Happy weekend, y'all. Josh is severe weather, and we are going to see some of our most extreme temperatures yet this winter slash spring slash summer, depending on where you live. Uh, but let's get right to it here. If you could subscribe to my channel, I very much would appreciate that. I will share my screen with y'all, and you can take a look at what the setup is here. And uh, we are going to have a major storm from the west moving in early next week, crossing the center of the country to the middle parts of next week, and then moving across the eastern U.S. late in the week. With it, we're going to see some extreme warmth of record highs from the Ohio Valley down to the south, maybe even into the mid-Atlantic states, and then record chill across the west and the upper Midwest, and in between, uh, anywhere from severe weather down south to extreme amounts of snowfall across the interior west, the upper Midwest, into uh, southeast Canada, and maybe an ice storm as well across the Great Lakes and interior northeast. So an awful lot to unpack for you guys. I'm going to do my very best to uh, show you what we're looking at right now. You can see on the GFS model this weekend, uh, does start warming back up across the uh, central and eastern parts of the country while the west is going to turn colder. What's going to happen is we're going to have a lobe of the uh, polar vortex dropping southward here into the upper Midwest and the Rockies from central Canada. This is next Tuesday, and you can see the warmth intensifying over the Mid-South and the cold intensifying across Alberta and Montana. And the two are going to cause quite an extreme boundary to form here uh, by the middle of next week, where we're looking at temperatures that are going to be significantly above average over the Ohio Valley and into the mid-Atlantic states and significantly below average across Montana, Wyoming, and the western Dakotas. This kind of cold is going to rival what we saw right before Christmas across the northern Rockies and Plains. But we did not see this kind of warmth, so this is going to be a much bigger extreme with air conditioners running in the southeast and uh, heat running and blasting in the upper Midwest where we're going to have some dangerous wind chills. And uh, this cold will eventually make its way into the northeast by next weekend, but ahead of it we're going to see some abrupt temperature swings, and I'm going to get more into that in just a little bit here. Um, here's a look at the temperature profile that we're looking at. And you all can see this weekend is chilly in the east, but it does bounce back as we get early into next week. And we're warming up. This is Monday here down south. We're looking at 70s and 80s. Meanwhile, parts of the upper Midwest are going to be in the teens and 20s. But as we get into Tuesday, the cold intensifies and pushes south with sub-zero readings in North Dakota and 80s and low 90s here across uh, deep south Texas on Tuesday. It only gets hotter from there. Uh, Wednesday, we see 70s all the way up into southeast Nebraska and maybe the Missouri and Iowa border. Uh, while meanwhile, you go about 300 miles northwest into South Dakota and the Black Hills, we're at sub-zero readings. So uh, across the 300-mile uh, range, we're seeing a temperature gradient of 70 degrees or more, and that is going to set up some very extreme weather. Uh, the south continues to heat up. We have 80s and low 90s in many areas of the Gulf Coast region, even 80s getting up into Virginia and North Carolina here on Thursday. And that warmth spreads northeast, but you can see quite a bit of a gradient here in New England with teens and single digits in Maine, 30s across southern New England, and 60s in the Philadelphia area, 70s in Baltimore. So spring meeting winter here very much so. And uh, low temperatures Thursday night will be 20 to 30 below zero across uh, the Dakotas into Minnesota with a fresh snowpack, which I'm going to get to here in a little bit. It is going to cool off, though, by the weekend here across the southeast, but nothing too extreme as, again, we bounce right back here over the weekend back into the 70s and 80s over the Gulf states. Um, I will show you guys some temperature swings in Kansas, and you guys can see here, this is the uh, cold front sweeping through on Wednesday morning. Uh, we are looking at morning temperatures in the lower 60s in places like Topeka and Olathe, and then 20s and 30s spreading southward here into parts of northwestern Kansas during the day on Wednesday. So Wednesday around dinner time in Kansas, we are looking at uh, low 70s in Wichita and low 20s when you get up towards McCook, Nebraska. Uh, Olathe, 69 degrees Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday night, uh, we are down to 41 at midnight. And we are down to about 19 on Thursday morning. So a 50 plus degree temperature drop. Wichita is going to see that as well. 73 down to about 18 degrees. And I will zoom out so you can see kind of a bigger part of that region and how those temperatures are looking. And you all can see here 
just a massive amount of cold. The, the front is, is not hard at all to see. You can see it from uh, southwest Kansas. This is Wednesday around 6 p.m. Central and uh, spreading up into Illinois. And then it just carves right on through the southern and central plains. And as we zoom out and look a little bit more into the Midwest, you all can kind of see that as well. Quite a gradient here where south of Chicago on Thursday, we're in the 60s, 50s and low 60s. You get up into Wisconsin and northwest Illinois, and it's in the 20s. Uh, so some extreme temperatures expected here. Uh, as we look ahead next week, we see widespread warmth Wednesday across parts of Florida. We're going to be in the low 90s on the I-4 corridor, 70s in Nashville, 80s in Birmingham, near 80 in Atlanta. Those are all record highs on Wednesday. Thursday, the heat intensifies in Florida. We're looking at 91, 92, and maybe even a little bit hotter. Uh, mid 80s in parts of North Carolina, upper 80s around Augusta and Savannah, Georgia, 85 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 85, 86 around Tallahassee, and even up into Jersey, 71 in Atlantic City, 75, 76 around DC, pushing 80 in Richmond and Charlottesville. And even back across northern Kentucky and Ohio, we're looking at low to mid 70s on Thursday. But that changes quickly as we get to Friday. This front drops south. It's still hot in Florida, but we're now in the 40s and low 50s here across the same areas that are looking at that record heat. So quite a bit of change in temperature. And uh, I will take you back into the central part of the country where it's even more extreme. Uh, we look at uh, highs on Tuesday in the 60s and 70s across Oklahoma, Missouri, and the Ohio River Valley, and 90s across deep south Texas. I think we'll see probably triple digits around the uh, Rio Grande Valley, maybe pushing 100. Uh, it was 108 in southern Mexico here on Thursday. That heat is expanding northward as we get into next week as the subtropical ridge is going to flex its muscles and say, you guys are going to crank your air conditioning. But take a look here at Thursday. We have uh, still 80s around Houston, 60s in Dallas, but now into the 30s in northern Oklahoma, single digits in Nebraska, and below zero temperatures expected for high temperatures, not even lows. If I show you the lows, you're going to be like, oh my goodness, teens and 20s below zero across this entire region, but we're looking at record high minimums, 60s and low 70s for the central Gulf. And take a look here at morning lows on Friday, 20 to 30 below zero across the Dakota. So it is about to change drastically. And actually, I want to show you all tropical tidbits here, and you'll be able to see the uh, storm track. We see a big storm moving into the west on Monday, heavy snow in the northwest and the Rockies Monday into Tuesday. That is going to spread onto the plains here Tuesday night and Wednesday, setting up extreme amounts of wind and blizzard conditions into Dakotas, Wyoming, into western Minnesota on Wednesday morning. And then as warmer air moves up out ahead of it, we'll see severe weather across parts of the south, uh, southern Mississippi Valley later Wednesday, Wednesday night. We see heavy rain expanding up to Chicago and the Michigan and Ohio border and into western Pennsylvania. A stripe of frozen precipitation, sleet and freezing rain over northern Iowa, uh, southern Wisconsin, much of lower Michigan spreading into western New York and then eventually into central New England. Uh, but as this low pressure tracks northeast and the cold air spills in behind it, we're looking at an all-out blizzard possible across the eastern Dakotas and much of Minnesota and northwest Wisconsin. And we're going to talk about some major snow totals around the Twin Cities in northwestern Wisconsin coming up here on Wednesday into Thursday. And this is a long period snowstorm. It's not a quick 10 inch or not a quick uh, 12 12 hour 10 inch snowstorm we're looking at a 36 to 48 hour snowfall across this entire region with the cold air to follow here and uh it stays active next weekend we could be talking about snow across pennsylvania new jersey new york city region as that cold air is locked in ahead of our next low pressure system and i'll get to that here in videos coming up next week uh taking a look at the uh, snow we're seeing in the northwest major amounts here by uh, the middle of next week 30 to 40 inches in the cascades 20 to 30 inches in the coastal ranges and the interior northwest still looking at some snow but not nearly as much as we spread onto the plains though you can see we'll have a weak storm clipping through here monday and monday night in northern parts of minnesota maybe a quick six to eight inches of snow but the next storm is the big one we see one to two feet widespread, maybe even three feet over parts of South Dakota, Southwest Minnesota. The Twin Cities on the GFS are looking at the potential for two feet of snow. 
Uh, it's a little early to make an extreme call like that. Uh, some models have shown 12 inches. A few are showing 30 inches on the high end, but definitely going to be a disruptive snowstorm here for Wednesday, Wednesday night, and especially Thursday across this zone here with blizzard conditions expected. And as we spread uh, into parts of the east, oops, sorry about that. Uh, we see uh, the heaviest snowfall across upper Michigan, where one to two feet may accumulate uh, northern and central Ontario and into southern Quebec. And we'll see some of this spreading down into northern New England as well, where a foot of snow is possible. But some extreme amounts of snow here, a large band of 30 inches of snow from South Dakota to about Thunder Bay, Ontario or Marathon. On, no, yeah, Thunder Bay, not South Thunder Bay. I'm sorry, uh, closer to Sault Ste. Marie and then spreading into Quebec as well. So this will be one of our biggest uh, footprints of snow that we've seen the entire winter. And it's not just snow. Uh, we're also concerned about frozen precipitation. You all can see uh, sleet totals here, one to two inches of sleet just south of the area heaviest snow. So expanding from the northern part of Iowa across central and southern Wisconsin, right on into Ontario. We're looking at potential sleet around Toronto and uh, south of Ottawa, but right around the U.S. Canadian border. And freezing rain totals could be significant as well when we get closer to Milwaukee and Janesville, Wisconsin, uh, getting into about the Quad Cities, maybe right along the border counties of Illinois. Uh, Detroit could see an ice storm out of this. Uh, same for Buffalo, uh, Syracuse, New York, maybe going all the way over to Albany. And uh, as we look into New England, we also see the potential for light icing in the interior parts of New England, uh, which may include the Boston area, but primarily the North Shore here. So this is going to be a crushing amount of ice for some as well. Looking at that snow in Minneapolis, I did highlight that. Um, you can see most of it falls on Thursday. Uh, the, the control of the GFS ensemble shows about a foot of snow falling. Uh, the mean of all the ensembles shows about 15 inches, but we have the uh, potential for as much as two feet uh, falling here in about a day and a half. And uh, more snow over the weekend could push us over 30 inches for the second half of February if uh, some of these models are correct. And uh, then looking ahead to the next storm that I hinted at in my video, uh, we can see um, potentially a, a major snowfall for the Northeast, uh, especially around New York City, North Jersey. Um, towards the end of the following week, so around the 1st and 2nd of March as we roar in like a lion. Uh, but this model, this was from yesterday's model. Uh, the run after it um, drops that south into Virginia and D.C., where there could be over a foot of snow. Uh, the model run after that expands it into Philly and Baltimore, Maryland, and Delaware and South Jersey. And uh, let me move this forward so you can see, Okay. And then uh, last night's run says the Poconos, central and eastern Pennsylvania, into southern New England. And then this morning's model run, again, has dropped it south into Virginia. So somebody here in the northeast, I think, is going to end up with a major snowfall as we ring in the month of March, as we start meteorological spring. But it's very early to say if it's going to be Virginia, New England, or across New Jersey, Delaware, Philly, and Baltimore. Someone, though, is going to see a big snow out of this. And we'll again look at that as we get later into next week. Um, now, we do have some severe weather possible as we get into the middle parts of next week. Um, this is the day five storm prediction center. Slight risk expected here over parts of the lower Mississippi Valley, including East Texas, mainly Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night. Quite a potent storm system moving through. You can see on the energy helicity index, uh, we do have um, some potential for some leading strong storms in Oklahoma and Texas on Tuesday night, but Wednesday is likely going to be the bigger day for severe weather from about Baton Rouge on up into northern parts of Mississippi. And there could be some tornadoes out of this, unfortunately, once again. And um, as we look farther on, we can see maybe a minor outbreak of severe weather across Tennessee and Arkansas and northeastern Texas and southeast Oklahoma uh, Tuesday afternoon and evening. But really, the better chance is going to be on Wednesday across Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, maybe sneaking up into West Texas and West Alabama for Wednesday night. And there will be the potential for some tornadoes according to this energy helicity index. Uh, this uh, is going to be a little bit of a different look than last week's storm. Um, it's going to be farther north, uh, but we're also going to have more moisture spreading north. And it looks like maybe some form of an upper level trough that cuts through and actually adds some shear to the atmosphere. Uh, I'll show you guys here kind of the 850 millibar height. And you can see real quick um, that there is quite a potent upper level low moving through the Memphis, Tennessee area Wednesday and then up towards Hopkinsville 
Wednesday evening and then up into Indiana and um, into Kentucky here for Wednesday evening. So it's quite possible we could see a larger area that gets outlined with severe weather. Uh, I will break that down more next week in Wednesday's video. I am actually going to be out of town staying in a hotel for business uh, Sunday, Monday into early Tuesday. I can't do videos on uh, on the kind of hotel internet that I'm expecting because I'm using fiber internet at home and there's a lot that needs to be uploaded and updated. Uh, but I will do my best to give you guys um, updates as much as I can. So thank you so much for visiting me this weekend. If you could subscribe to my channel, that way you'll see more on this big storm coming in next week and uh, what could change for the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic region for the beginning of March. Uh, I'll have plenty of videos talking about that. And as always, I want to thank you for your time. I want to give all the glory to God. And I would like to share my faith real quick with you. Ephesians 3, 14, 19, a wonderful set of uh, scripture here. For this cause, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, that you may be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inward man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, to the end that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be strengthened to comprehend with all the saints that what is breadth and length and height and depth, and to know Christ's love, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Very quickly, that just to me means that um, everything that I do is, is, is given to me by God through the love that he's given us through his son, Jesus Christ. And I would love to pray for you and give you that spiritual gift as well. So if you would like to have any prayer requests or struggling in your faith, I would very much love to pray for you and help you to see the Lord, the Father through his son, Jesus Christ, uh, who has given me the ability to do what I do every day. And that is to provide you all with the best weather that I can and to help save lives and also to help encourage you in your faith walk. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. God bless you and look forward to talking to you again next week. See you then.